So you join us now for the next in our groups, going to select the next finalist who's going to appear on Sunday night. And this, of course, is the Terrier group. And this is her seventh group to judge at Crufts. She also judged best in show at Crufts. And there's our judge, Zena Thorne Andrews. She's judged every other group at Crufts, and so this will give her the full set of seven groups. She's the only judge in the British Isles approved to judge all breeds, a true all-rounder and a great breeder. So Zena Thorne Andrews taking the commanding position in the spotlight at the centre of the ring, someone who is hugely respected within the dog world, and I'm sure she's looking forward to setting eyes on these terriers for the first time. So with our judge in position, we show your appreciation to all of our terrier breeds as they enter the Crufts main arena. This, of course, the first chance she has to look at these best of breed winners, and the first of them, the largest of the terriers, the Airedale Terrier. The Australian Terrier. Followed in by the Australian Terrier. The Bedlington Terrier. The sweet lamb-like look of the Bedlington Terrier. The Border Terrier. And there's the Border Terrier. The Bull Terrier. A heavyweight clown, this, the Bull Terrier. The Miniature Bull Terrier. And the same in miniature, the, the micro version, the miniature bull terrier. The can terrier. Gorgeous little can terrier. The chesky terrier. And here's the sesky terrier. Breed developed in the Czech Republic. The dandy Dinmont terrier. The sweet face of the dandy Dinmont terrier. The smooth fox terrier. And here comes the smooth fox terrier, the gentleman of the terrier group. The wire fox terrier. Followed by his cousin, another gentleman, this time wearing a nice wire coat, the wire fox terrier. The Glenivermal terrier. From Ireland, it's the Glenivermal. The Irish terrier. The crisp red coat of the Irish Terrier. The Jack Russell Terrier. Here comes the Jack Russell from a big entry today. And a big round of applause, popular little dog. The Kerry Blue Terrier. Gorgeous Kerry Blue Terrier, just look at that Terrier attitude. The Lakeland Terrier. Lakeland Terrier, smart and workmanlike. The Manchester Terrier. The glossy black and white coat of the Manchester Terrier. The Norfolk Terrier. And here's the Norfolk Terrier. Full of their own importance, this breed. Great the characters. The Norwich Terrier. And his prick-eared cousin, the Norwich Terrier. And here's the Parson Russell Terrier. The Scottish Terrier. Another full of attitude, the Scottish Terrier. The Celium Terrier. And from Scotland to Wales, and it's the Celium Terrier. The Sky Terrier. And here's the Sky Terrier. The soft-coated Wheaton Terrier. And here the soft-coated Wheaton Terrier. The Staffordshire Bull Terrier. Always a big round of applause for the Staffy, the Staffordshire Bull Terrier. The Welsh Terrier. And here is the Welsh distinctive for its black and tan coat. Last but not least, the, the little West Highland White Terrier, the Westie. I shall now hand you over to Jonathan Daltrey, who along with Graham Hill will take you through the main judging of this Terrier.
Thank you. Thanks very much, Marina. So, welcome once again to Zena. So Zena crossing the ring now to take a closer look at the best of breed winners that have been sent through to her by all the best of breed, all the breed judges in the rings throughout the halls here at the National Exhibition Centre. Bull Terrier there and the miniature Bull Terrier. And just taking in general outline and balance of his view of the dogs standing still, looking for breed type. Matching each both in her head and in her experience with the breed standards that she knows so well. Super little Jack Russell Terrier showing so well. Terriers range in size from the tallest to the much smaller Norfolk. The Norfolk and the Norwich getting a, a good look. The Parson Russell Terrier. And past the longest dog in the group, the Sky Terrier. Curious creatures who love to dig and the robust, robust characters often disguise their true sensitivity, sensitivity and they can make superb household companions. So, I think we're going to have a closer look at the first of these best of breed winners, and that's the Ennerdale Terrier, judged today by Elaine Johnston. So the first to be looked at this evening, the King of Terriers, originating from the Air Valley in Yorkshire, a cross between larger terriers and probably otter hounds. This is the Airedale Terrier, a powerful dog, needs plenty of exercise and strong will, but in the right hands can make the most wonderful family dog. Called the King of Terriers, isn't he, Frank, it, for good reason? Yes, yeah, the, the tallest of them. Um, they used to be called the Riverside Terriers when they f f were first developed because they were worked on the riverbanks, keeping down water rats. This one, a very smart one. The crisp coat, nicely sculptured outline. A lot of trimming goes to get a dog looking as smart as this. Short-backed, strong, nice straight top line there should be. Control the docks of the city of Hull, versatility, the best of breed, Airedale Terrier. The Airedale Terrier. And today we'll be seeing the Australian Terrier best of breed. That was a good entry for Australian Terriers this year. Now on the table it's the Australian Terrier. This was developed from a variety of British terriers which, which were taken out to Australia by 19th century emigrants. And they were developed from the Scottish terrier, the Sky and the Cairn. And they were taken there, of course, to keep down the vermin on their new uh, territory. This one's come from Sweden to compete. One groups in Sweden. I wonder how he's going to do here. If you touch them, Frank, that coat is harsh, isn't it? But with a good, thick, soft undercoat. Yes, it has a protective undercoat. It's a crisp coat. This is one of the longest of the terrier breeds. The longer in the body. Many of the terriers are short-backed and cobby. Not so this one. They can make wonderful companions, although, like all terriers, there's a bit of attitude there to deal with. And a little silkier top knot on the top of the head. Named after the mining town of Bedlington in Northumberland back in 1825, he was first called the Rothbury Terrier. This is the Bedlington. They were really prized hunting dogs for foxes, badgers and hares, so don't let that rather cute appearance fool you into thinking this is anything other than a true terrier. It they have a lot of unique features to them. They've got this light mincing action, this long head, and we'll see that the little tassels on the end of the ears. These were originally used as protection against rats so that the ears didn't get ripped. This one's been three times a world winner. It's come from Russia to compete here at Crufts and giving our own British Bedlingtons a run for its money. Now the distinctive outline of the Border Terrier, essentially a working terrier, that's what the standard says. It's got the head of an otter, a thick double coat, thick skin for protection when working, and a tail a little bit like a carrot. 
And these little terriers were bred to run with the foxes, hence those legs. They need to be able to keep up, but they needed to be small enough to follow the fox when it goes down a hole to earth. And fairly narrow dogs. They're span they should be spannable in the ribcage, not too heavy. Essentially a working terrier, no exaggeration at all. This one looks very laid back, like he's taking it all in his stride. This is the breed record holder. He's been best of breed at Crufts three times now. A gentleman named James Hinks was responsible for the modern bull terrier, probably created by crossing bulldogs with English white terriers that sadly no longer exist. To begin with, they were always white, but now we can have coloured bull terriers as well in red, brindle, and tricolour. They're characterised, aren't they, Frank, by that amazing egg shaped head? The egg shaped head, which it's thought that the collie played an influence in the development of the breed to give it the length of the head. But they've also got a lot of substance and a broad chest. Uh, they, a, a, real, <laughs> a real clown and gladiator of the group. So, full of her own importance and enjoying this big ring experience. Love the way the movements describe jaunty, subtle, and full of intent. Now, the miniature bull terrier essentially has the same standard as the bull terrier, but the top height, the desirable top height, is 14 inches, and sometimes they're measured in the ring. But again, I call it the little pocket rocket, that lovely strength in the foreface, strong head, dark, smallish eye, and a deep chest. One of the challenges is to get the same quality in a scaled-down version. This one's come all the way from Germany to compete today. Standard is pretty much the same as for a bull terrier in everything other than size, isn't it? So as yep. you say, that the key is to manage to get the essence of that breed, but just scaled down. Yeah, and the, the, the German breeders have been very good at this. The top, this one's come from Germany from a top breeder. They have a lot of good ones out there because the, the, the bull terrier itself was a banned breed. So many of the breeders turned their attentions to breeding good miniature bull terriers. This is the Cairn Terrier, used as far back as the 16th century by Scottish crofters and shepherds who needed to be rid of all sorts of vermin, including things as big as foxes. Sadly, including the sport of otter hunting as well, but of course that's banned now. The Cairn is famed for his gameness, his ability to ignore the pain of over-exercise when he's chasing down his quarry and still carry on until he gets the job done. This comes from a very famous kennel in Sweden, the Johus kennel. This is beautiful type. The, the, they're relatively light breed, good length of leg, again a double coat for protection and a varminty, rascally expression. They're full of character. And never want to be presented too over trimmed or anything. We're looking for a rustic, shaggy little dog here, but with that wonderful hair framing the face. I like this one very much, full of quality, full of breed type and a great mover. Now our judge looking at the Sesky Terrier. This is a breed which was developed in the Czech Republic. It's a relatively modern breed. The breed was developed by a Czech geneticist, Dr. Horak, and he started his breeding program from Celiums and Scotties. And apparently this one, Nina, loves to travel, which is a jolly good job because she's come all the way from Dallas in Texas to compete, where she's an American grand champion, a Canadian champion, best puppy in show as a, a youngster, which is quite something to do.
Now, it's a, it's a breed where many of the terrier breeds are hand-trimmed. This is one where you can take shortcuts. The body coat can be clippered, and they've got softer furnishings on the body, so less trimming than a lot of the terrier breeds. A distinctive outline with a slight rise over the loin. The tail carried lower than a lot of the terrier breeds. They're a very gentle breed despite their terrier instincts, they're devoted and loyal to their owners. The Dandy Dinmont Terrier, this, in the border counties of Scotland, where originally a book was written by Sir Walter Scott called Guy Mannering, and there's a character in there named Dandy Dinmont. That's where this breed gets its name from. This is a breed which has a unique outline, this rise over the loin. It makes it weaselly in the body, a weasel-like body. Wonderful head and expression. It's a dome skull, big dark eyes. How can you resist that? But again, a crisp coat on top. This is a breed which has its own tartan. A couple of years ago, the Duke of Buccleu gave them their own tartan, a black and yellow, which is uh, often worn by the exhibitors at the shows. And the literary connections go through to the standard as well. This grey-blue is called pepper, or they can be reddish-brown, which is called mustard. Now, the smooth fox terrier is on the table. This is the first variety of fox terriers. His name tells you his original function. He was bred to go to ground after fox. Come thought it was bred from the old English black and tan terriers with an infusion of white terrier blood. He's short-backed, smart and elegant, sometimes known as the gentleman of the terrier world. And this one also come from the United States to compete. They have such strong terrier breeding there. Six times a national specialty winner in the US. Described, aren't they, as on the tiptoes of expectation, and you can see it in the character. And a beautiful front action, clean and parallel, and this long head, which gives it a powerful jaw. It's fit for function. It could do its job. Again, fairly narrow and deep in the chest. Again, very alert, like all of the terriers. Ultra smart. I, I can't understand why they're not more popular as family pets. They're a wonderful, wonderful breed. Now we have the wire fox terrier, very similar to what we've just seen, but with this wonderful crisp wire coat. When these hunt terriers were first developed from the old English white terrier, the bull terrier and the beagle, the coats varied. Some were wire or broken, some were smooth, and then eventually the individual breeds were separated back in the 1870s. The standards are almost identical. We want the same quality features, the long, lean head, the short back, the high set tail, which makes them a very elegant outline. It takes a lot of work to get a, a, a wire fox terrier looking like this. Hours of trimming, finger and thumb trimming. They need a harsh, crisp top coat. Wire coat right down the legs. Should nothing soft and fluffy about them. Lovely parallel movement you can see there, where those front legs coming towards you move exactly parallel, just what the judge is looking for. Furnishings on the face and legs, of course, but hand stripped, as Frank says, with finger and thumb closer on the body. And if you touch that coat, it's crisp and wire. And really using his hocks to power himself around. And now something quite different, the strength and sturdiness of the Glenivir Mal Terrier. A lot of substance in that frame. He's a breed which comes from Ireland, from the Glen, just south of Dublin. He's bred to go to ground for badgers. This is a really ancient breed, a sort of solid terrier developed to hunt badgers. Low slung. It's, his legs have a slight bend to them, and it's said that that helped them to draw badgers out of their earth. 
and until 1966 they had to undergo a working trial before they could be a champion great characters and if you talk to anyone who lives with one they'll tell you they're game and spirited aren't they not just in the hunt but uh, as a domestic pet as well <laughs> very determined that means stubborn yes, yes you need a strong temperament to live with a glen of Imal. this one a wheaton they also come in shades of gray such a beautiful outline there this is the the racy and always fiery red irish terrier once described as the poor man's sentinel the farmer's friend and the gentleman's favorite He's the oldest of the four Irish Terrier breeds, and he used to be called the Irish Red Terrier. They weren't always just this red colour. In the early days, they could become mixed, but there was a bitch called Poppy, typical name for the, produce all of red puppies, and then they started selective breeding only for this red or Wheaton colour. Nice and deep chested in the body, good level back, and that high set tail carried just gaily up, up. They're a racy terrier, a bit more, a bit longer in the back, longer in the neck. They said they're real daredevils, but highly devoted to their owners. Not so keen on other dogs. <laughs> Good tempered with humans, though. Now, Robin, a new addition to the terrier group, perhaps this year, the Jack Russell Terrier. In fact, the second year of the three. Now, from only the only the second year that we've had Jack Russells at Crufts and a very big entry. Most people watching at home know that Jack Russells have been around for years, but they've only in the last few years been recognised by the Kennel Club because the original Jack Russell people wanted to stay clear of dog shows and Kennel Club events. They were developed in Australia, weren't they? And they're very strong in the United States too. And uh, th although they come from the uh, stock we which originally we sent to uh, Australia, again as vermin dogs, but the breed standard has been developed a little, along a, a little bit different lines using the, the show type that they developed in America. Today dogs, sorry. today dogs from all over the world here competing. Well, this, this particular one comes all the way from Hungary and such a smart little outline on the move, full of business, isn't it? National dog of Ireland, this and the unmistakable blue coat colour of the Kerry Blue Terrier with those black points, darker coat on his beard moustache and the tips of his feet, full of attitude, the most gorgeous head there. And this one has come from Ireland to win here. It's a beautiful colour and a great show dog. At the World Show in Leipzig in Germany just a few months ago, this was not only world winner in the breed, but second in the Terrier group. A champion not only in Ireland, but in several European countries. The younger ones are born much darker, puppies almost black, and then gradually over the first 18 months of the dog's life, the coat develops its true colour. Everything from a, a, a blue to almost a dark, isn't it? The... <laughs> Terrier Blue is like lightning on a lead. They're so feisty, full of Terrier spirit. Now this is a very smart Lakeland Terrier on the table. The breed originates, as its name suggests, in the Lake District of Cumberland and Westmoreland. Many of the valleys there had their own type of Lakeland Terrier. The breeders then got together to unify them and get a standard. And this was another one that was designed to be able to run with the hounds, so you needed those legs and they're bred for stamina. Essentially a unexaggerated terrier breed. Workmanlike, again a crisp double coat. The head is not as long as some of the other terrier breeds, completely without exaggeration. This one is a really smart mover and a fantastic top line.
Sometimes some of the terriers can appear a bit diffident on the move, but not in this case. Real drive from behind, which is what you're looking for. This is the Manchester Terrier and developed in the town whose name he bears, he worked his keep as a ratter in the mills and warehouses of the growing town. Always black and tan and the markings are really distinct and important, including those little tan spots on the cheeks and the thumbprints above his feet. This shows the diversity of breeds in the Terrier group. There's lots of trimmed breeds. He's a dog with minimal breeding. A quick rub over with the duster and you're ready for the show ring. They were bred, you know, in the, in the mill towns of Manchester to keep down vermin in factories which when, when they were developing the, in, in the Industrial Revolution. Still a strong looking dog, compact and every bit the terrier, but there's an elegance about Manchester's, isn't there? Absolutely, in the, in the head and the movement and the slight rise over the loin. Distinctive feature of the thumbprints in the tan on the front legs. And there we see them as he comes towards us, the clean movement, little black thumbprints in the tan. Norfolk Terrier on the table, compact and cobby. Until 1964, this breed was known as the drop-eared Norwich, which we'll see in a moment. This one has dropped ears, a cobby body. They were developed to keep down vermin. Until the 1960s, they were shown together, and then the breeders wanted them separated and had a campaign at the Kennel Club to get them separated. There's a hard, wiry coat there to get hold of. Should be straight and fairly close to the body. All shades of red, wheat and all. They can come in black and tan and grizzle. And when you put your hand on the coat, decent undercoat to keep it warm, but lovely, crisp and harsh on the surface. A lot of substance in a small frame and a lot of temperament and self-importance. Should be nice and level-backed, keeping that nice straight top line on the move. The little Norfolk. Thomas Mason at 45, Norwich Terriers here today. This is a male, 6494. Now, unlike the Norfolk Terrier, the Norwich has little prick ears set well apart on the top of his slightly rounded and fairly wide skull. He's a pocket rocket nonetheless, this Terrier, with immense character. He radiates from those bright, keen little eyes. He's giving a bit of resistance there to having his teeth looked at. Yes, a strong skull and muzzle and sharply pricked ears. It's thought that the breed originated in, near Cambridge and has strong con connections with Cambridge University. A lot of the young gentlemen students wanted a terrier to go hunting with and they found a, a breeder in a village outside um, Cambridge that, at Trumpington and he was known for a while as the Trumpington Terrier. It's like a little tank of a terrier, isn't it? Every bit the little workman, but in a tiny little package and so full of character. And they could work in packs. The standard says spirited, but not quarrelsome. They'll get on with each other. I wonder if anybody told him that. <laughs> <laughs> full of determination and strongly boned. <laughs> Now the Parson Russell, it's a breed named after the founder of the breed, the Reverend John Russell, a hunting clergyman. Again, it was bred to go to ground after Badger and Fox. It bears some of the same taproot blood as the Jack Russell we saw earlier, but the type was divided by the two sets of breeders. This is longer legged, slightly different in the head and in the tail set. Another one with a close coat that should be harsh to the touch, but I think I'm right in saying it can be both rough and smooth, can't it, Yes, Frank? it's called a rough, smooth or a broken coat, yes. Predominantly white always, but with tan, lemon or black markings. This one with that lovely little tan ear. And it's thought that this is the type, the longer leg type, was the type originally favoured by the Reverend Russell.
confident, bold and friendly. That's what we're looking like in this looking for in this workmanlike little terrier. There are 83 Scottish terriers here for Judge and The Scottish Terrier, unmistakable in that outline, low to ground. The Scotty was bred to pursue its quarry, mostly foxes, badgers and other vermin below ground. Substantial, well-boned for its size, with a strong neck, short-backed and those wonderful prick ears, full of attitude, working all the time. This one, a big winner. It's come from America, where it's been best of breed at the Westminster Show. That's the American equivalent of Crufts. Best of breed twice there, and winner of the National Scottish Terrier Club of America. So a, a big winner with a big record. Relatively long head, this breed, and you can see the attitude and temperament in those wonderful eyes. In fact, if a Scotty takes your fancy, you better be good with teaching boundaries or it'll be in charge in five minutes, won't it? And again, there's a lot of substance under that coat, that crisp double coat. Power, powerful hindquarters driving it around, a lovely level top line and high set tail. The Celium on the table now hails from Wales and from Celium Manor in Pembrokeshire and it was developed by Captain John Edwards who developed the breed to work with otter hounds and I have seen them working with um, packs of otter hounds in Wales. This is another really sturdy little dog. Should be oblong in outline, but always balanced, giving an impression of substance for its size. Yes, it's a rectangular breed. It's not short and compact. You want a bit of length to the body. This one cut bred in America from the Good Spice Kennel. And here, the handler here is Marjorie Good from America to handle it. They have a wonderful description of, of having punishing square jaws because, of course, what you always have to remember is that these terriers were bred to do a job dealing with the vermin that we want rid of before the days of modern poisons and traps and methods of getting rid of rats and mice. They're wonderful character breeds. You know, when I think of the, the popularity of the West Highland White, here's one which, again, is an it's a vulnerable native breed, so not a lot of them bred. The longest of the terriers, this, the Skye's one of the oldest of Scottish breeds with his roots in the Western Isles. Long, low, level-backed, the Skye Terrier has a hard, flat coat with shorter hair on the head and, of course, those wonderful ears. Of course, this is the breed which was made famous by Greyfriars Bobby, the Sky Terrier, which showed the loyalty of the breed. When its master died, it stayed by his grave from 1858 to 1872, and it was fed by the locals. So such was its devotion. And the ears of the Sky Terrier, this one's got prick ears, but they can be dropped, always covered with long hair, which you can see flowing in the prick-eared dog here. Long, low and level are three words we could use to describe the outline of the breed. Very resolute characters. This one a cream with some darker shading on its ears. The Sky Terrier. Judge now looking at the soft-coated Wheaton Terrier, native breed of Ireland, and its name tells you a lot about it. Soft-coated is the texture of the, the breed. It should have a silky sheen on the coat. Wheaton, any shade of ripening wheat, defines the colour, and we see both here. It's got a larger frame than many of the terriers in the group, medium size, but still should be compact and upstanding, an active, hardy breed, full of joie de vie. If you ask most people who live with these dogs, they'll tell you they're real clowns. Outgoing temperaments. It's thought that this breed played some uh, part in the development of the Irish terrier. 
was the breed in Ireland by an Irish developer until 1937. And here in the UK in 1943. Zena Thorne Andrews, our judge, was very instrumental in the development of the breed standard in this country. Although she was largely a hound breeder, she's been experienced at judging terriers since the 1960s and has a keen interest in all the terrier breeds, especially the hunt terriers. The most popular in the terrier group, unmistakable in that shape, this is the Staffordshire Bull Terrier. Smooth coated, muscular, and of great substance for its size. It's a bold and furious, fierce breed. Correctly handled, a great family dog, too. Two judges here today, nearly 400 dogs entered, but they needed a referee. The two judges couldn't uh, come to a joint decision, so the referee was called. And that head should be short and broad, shouldn't it? Deep, with pronounced cheeks and rose or half-pricked ears, curled back like a little rose. Because it's got some... It's a, one of the bull breeds. It's got bull, bulldog in its uh, ancestry. Very nice mover, good wide chest and a clean action. A very smart outline on this Welsh Terrier. This was the black and, the black and tan Terrier of Wales, and it has old-fashioned breeds in its development. Rather like a rather heavily made Fox Terrier in type. Sturdy, short-backed, but a little more bone and substance than the Fox Terriers. And you can see there those almost cat-like feet. High set tail always standing to attention. This is a short back terrier, but should have plenty of substance in the body. A crisp wire coat right down its legs. Unexaggerated. Good, powerful jaws for dispatching vermin. And it's thought that the Airedale and the Irish play a part in the ancestry and development of the Welsh Terrier. Judge, looking at the keen expression, always alert the Terriers. Instantly recognisable by that wonderful head and the virtue of its dark, its dark pigment on a harsh white coat. Deep-chested, compact little terrier carried on short, muscular legs, oozing attitude and style. So characteristic in the head and face there, those little prick ears just appearing above that wonderful ruff of coat. And I like this very much. It looks full of quality and full of type and came in showing really well. The, the West Highland White was really developed from a strain of white cairns. The white cairn was scorned by many breeders, but one breeder, Colonel Malcolm, started to develop the white cairns. There was an improvement and change in the shorter back, different tail set, and a stronger head. But that's the ancestry of the breed. Now they're one of the most popular terrier breeds. And the crowd really recognising the quality of this particular exhibit. It'll be interesting to see what happens now. So Zena Thorne Andrew is going to walk down her lineup, remind herself of all these wonderful terrier breeds before she chooses the third of our Crufts 2018 group winners. Just walking round, reminding herself of what she found on hands on examination. We've only seen them from a distance. She's gone over them, checked the shoulders, the anatomy, the conformation of the dog, very important, which can be under a deep coat. So she has to believe what her hands tell her. And she's got some real quality in this group tonight, hasn't she, Frank? It's a beautiful group. Diversity, the... Short legs, the long lengths, the smooth coats, the level top lines and the curving outline of the Dandy Dinmont. Very smart Westy, really showing well. Right, back to the head of the lineup. And she'll start pulling out her.
final cut. In so, comes the Australian Terrier. The cairn, that lovely cairn from Sweden. The Wire Fox Terrier is called forward. The Irish Terrier and the Jack Russell. Here's the Manchester Terrier. The Scotty from America is there. And the Sky Terrier. So there's a, a lineup of eight for the Terrier group. Lovely lineup. It's a case of the long, the tall, and the short. They're all there from the Sky to the Cairn and the little Jack Russell. Jack Russell has not stopped showing from the moment it stepped into this ring. So they're moving to the back of the ring now, give themselves a bit more space, and Zena will see them move again. Just, just bring them forward. So from Sweden, the Australian Terrier. This is Mikor, three year old bitch. Holding a top line beautifully on the move. And just checking, level. just checking forward and rear movement. And there goes the cairn. Full of temperament, wonderful top line, correct tail carriage, just, just perfect for the angle of the tail. Good length of leg. That's a very nice can. Gorgeous outline. Now the wire fox terrier. Always a popular breed in the show ring. This one presented in the peak of condition. And the ultimate in smart show dogs, the wire fox terrier. Now, the Irish Terrier going. Now, this is a dog who's well traveled. He was made up a champion in England and top, top Terrier in England in 2016. Went across to America where he's had a great career and has come back now for Crufts to take best of breed here today. Standing back to take in the whole outline there. And little Sammy, all the way from Hungary, the Jack Russell Terrier. Won a wonderful class today under Jan Wood, an expert on the breed. Just super in every respect, giving a lovely performance. Taking in the proportions and top line of the breed and the, the audience clapping, such a terrific show. Grace and elegance in the Manchester Terrier. And this one is a best in show winner, a rarity. It's a long time since we've had a Manchester Terrier being a best in show winner. This is the breed record holder. 25 challenge certificates. Bopper from the United States, three-year-old dog, the Scottish Terrier. Handled by Rebecca Cross. Big Best winner. in show winner. <laughs> Wonderful outline, clean outline and great temp temperament. And the last of our finalists, Barney the Sky Terrier. Six years old, comes from Worcestershire. That long, low, long coated, but still with lovely balance. And a lot of substance and bone under that coat.
So, Frank, Zena's now going to uh, yeah. choose the third of our group winners. Who do you fancy? Well, it's decided it's already. <laughs> the Scottish Terrier, a wonderful win for Boffer from the United States. And the handler, it must be a lucky show for her. She's had best in show at Crufts before with the Scottish Terrier. It, second place goes to the Irish Terrier. Now, for third place, very decisively, it's the Jack Russell, a great win for the breed at Grubbs. Excellent to see that one in the frame. This is a wonderful line-up Zena's got. Oh, and, and that lovely Manchester Terrier takes group four. Super win for the breed. But there's our group winner for the Terrier group, the magnificent Bopper from the United States, Scottish Terrier, oozing quality and put in a super performance tonight. The ultimate show dog, a beautiful head and quite unfazed by the occasion. That's it, that's going to be a hard act to beat. A big bopper at Bimi Arts. Well, well, ladies and gentlemen, what a winner. Now, Rebecca, we've seen you here before again, haven't we? You've done it again. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Tell us about what you've won before. Uh, I was best in show here at 2015 with the Scottish Terrier. Yep. And is this one related to Nopper? Yes, he's a nephew. A nephew, how exciting. So imagine doing this, the double, and doing it all over again. How do you feel right now? I can't believe it. This is amazing, because he's my breeding, so it's, it means even more, so. Well, and you've come all the way over from America as well, and when did you arrive here? I got here on Wednesday or Thursday. I can't remember. <laughs> Thursday. <laughs> Lots of preparations as well? Yes. Yes, lots of preparation. I've had three hours of sleep. <laughs> I think that's like all of us around here today. We've had three hours of sleep. And what was it like in the breed ring today? Oh, my goodness. Um, I wasn't able to make the ring in the beginning because I was showing another breed. So my uh, Canopa's owner, Marina Kinkana, stepped in, and she showed him to the CC. And then I took him in for the best of breed, and, and then he went best of breed. So I got the moment to be able to watch my dog from outside the ring. So it was, it was a really wonderful day. Really wonderful day. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen, your Terrier Group winner at Crafts 2018, the Scottish Terrier. So there we have it. We know our Terrier Group winner, a lap of honor for Bopper, all the way from the United States. Will she be able to do it again, having won best in show at Croft here two years ago with his uncle? We shall have to wait and see, won't we, Frank? Absolutely, but it's uh, going to be a hard act. It's uh, in great form. <laughs>